Welcome to Biohackers Podcast. My name is Teemu Arina. Today I have as my guest Johannes Kettlehod from Clearlight Saunas. As you all know, I'm a big fan of sauna and as I'm someone from Finland, sauna is a big part of our culture. So we have more saunas than we have people in my country. So everyone is a freaking sauna expert. But uh, when it comes to really like diving deep into the different protocols of what you can do with a sauna, especially with an infrared sauna, which is slightly different from a traditional Finnish dry sauna, we're definitely going to also touch that point. Um, there is so much that you can do with a sauna. And I call it kind of my ultimate recovery cabin. And I every single day I use a sauna to start my day. And it's a big part of just, you know, staying healthy and also being able to kind of support my health and performance as I go forward. So with that, thank you very much um, for joining this uh, interview. Um, how are you doing? Hi, Timu. Uh, thanks so much for having me. I'm doing great. Very stoked to be here. Very excited to spend the next few minutes a couple of minutes actually together diving deeper into everything saunas sweating detoxification and whatnot right so you're actually right now inside a clear light sauna i see so um i guess it's on <laughs> not yet but you know i was tempting to do it because it's uh it's, it's kind of gotten cold here in germany so now it's on um but i probably couldn't do the entire podcast in close um you know i think it would get too hot eventually yeah I have the exactly the same unit and it is so good. Like one thing that I really like about Clearlight Sauna is just the unboxing and uh, putting the sauna together. Um, it was very intuitive and a great experience and the end result looks absolutely great. So I set up my sauna in the middle of my living room and it's always like when ev someone is coming for a visit, they, that's kind of what they immediately see when they come through my door they see the sauna in the middle of the living room and i i guess that's kind of how it should be like it's a it's an item that really fits um into the surroundings and the environment and uh it's beautiful uh it has great lights and um the way how it looks uh is very premium and it has a lot of utilities that it comes with for example the audio system which i also use every day for meditation and uh, sometimes some guided meditation but also i like audio soundscapes and ambient and sometimes classical music or something just to relax and also get into a mood i use sometimes soundtracks with affirmations and like uh, something that helps you to kind of keep up a positive mindset and set up your goals and all that so it's it's a very good unit And um, my question is like, what got you first interested in saunas? Like, why are you working on this field? Good question. And um, yeah, I think my sort of health and wellness journey started probably when I was a bit of a teenager, probably more subconsciously. But I, back then, my grandpa, my grandma used to actually have this um, this greenhouse, and she used to sort of grow her own veggies, you know, cucumbers, tomatoes, and, and lettuce and whatnot, and I've always preferred making my own salad over eating cake, which in Germany, at least, is a very common thing when you visit your grandma. You have like a lot of cake and, you know, uh, and coffee and tea with it, lots of sweets and ice cream and whatnot. So I think that really early got me actually interested into that. And I tended to realize that, you know, what I put in my body equals sort of the out, you know, input equals output. So if I look after my body through good nutrition, Well, I have more energy actually to do physical work, but also to just be mentally fit. And I think I, fortunately, I started realizing that was when I was like 14, you know, 15, because I used to sort of be quite intense at uh, at sports. In the beginning, it was sort of computer gaming on a competitive level, um, but then also sort of more physical exercises. And then I went into engineering. Um, It's this thing in Germany. If you ask a German, what's your profession? Oh, I'm an engineer. I think, you know, there's a reason why we have these car brands. So it's a bit of a funny head story. Um, but, you know, as part of the studies, I went to New Zealand. And where, you know, that's where I met my business partner, Sebastian. He is still living in Australia because he at some point moved from New Zealand to Australia. And 
we've been on some of the um, health conferences back then called the Longevity Now Conference. Um, you know, David Wolf was one of the early adopters. Hmm. I don't know if he's still around, um, but it was, what was it? Must have been. He was really big. Yeah, he was really big yeah. in superfood. So I know that uh, guy definitely. And his influence in the early days of health and wellness. I, I guess he got a little bit sidetracked with all kinds of flat earth theories. But yeah. um, his um, like influence and interest and the information that he was sharing, especially with tonic herbs and medicinal mushrooms, um, which is a big thing nowadays, like lion's mane and chaga and cordyceps and all that. Like that guy was talking about those things over a decade ago already. Uh, everything yeah. from goji berries to medicinal mushrooms. Like he was the guy... And um, solid, solid stuff on that front for sure. And uh, okay, so you went there. You went to the Longevity Now conference, and you met, I guess, a lot of people, people who are. Yeah, yeah. No, we met Clearlight there because um, you know, it's a US-based company, and back then I didn't know what an infrared sauna was, but I, you know, I attended. You know, we met them, and they were showing us the concept of an infrared sauna, which is something that you can assemble, you can flat pack, you can move with it. It hardly consumes electricity, no moisture, only needs fifteen to twenty minutes to preheat. And I mean, that was just a winner. And I think from that we actually looked quite quickly at, you know, hey, like this is the perfect health box or health tool, so to speak. Because, you know, you just sit in there, you relax, you sweat. But why, what obviously happens on your physiological level or metabolistic level is phenomenal. And I think there's a reason on why saunas are heavily studied, you know, traditional saunas, Finnish saunas, dry saunas, infrared saunas, because they really are powerful. And that sort of really got us on the sauna journey, which was seven, 78 years ago. Um, and ever since, we've sort of been involved with Clearlight, with sort of product developments, with really helping to make the product better. Um, and yeah, here we are, we sort of started our own podcast around this journey and just really trying to educate and inspire on the topics of saunas, infrared saunas, sweating, detoxification, the differences between that. And it's fun. Like it's a great product. It's a great, you know, there are great benefits with it. And I'm stoked to be here for sure. I totally agree. Now, if we like look at um, the health benefits of sauna, uh, traditional Finnish sauna, which has um, basically a unit that is heating the air uh, often, and you also throw some water sometimes on the stones that increase the humidity as well. Uh, that part specifically is for the activation of heat shock proteins. And as the humidity increases, uh, it actually makes respiration a little bit more challenging for the body. So uh, that affects the thermoregulation. So I actually like, in a traditional Finnish sauna, like something like 80 to 85 degrees Celsius and as high humidity as possible, personally. Um, if you have like an electric grill or electric unit, uh, the air tends to be a bit, bit more drier. Um, to start with compared to using wood heated or um, other means. Like in Finland, we also have this sauna called uh, smoke sauna, which is something where you heat the whole sauna with smoke. Uh, and um, it takes usually 24 hours to heat uh, a very good smoke sauna experience. But that's not for an everyman. Uh, for sure on an everyday use so it's it requires a little bit more effort but that's kind of my gold standard in just experience wise uh, uh, if i look at a dry finish sound it takes usually like 15 to 30 minutes to heat up if it's uh, some kind of electric grill inside and uh, what I really like about infrared sauna is how quick it is to turn on like you just literally turn it on and instead of heating the air it uses this far infrared, and in the in the case of clear light sauna, you also have full spectrum, where you have also uh, medium range, and and you you can have also near infrared range as well if you have the red light infrared unit, I guess, and and the full spectrum sauna setup. So then you have like multiple different modalities of wavelengths that are heating up, I guess, the body tissues directly, and it actually increases sweating more than um, traditional Finnish sauna in a sense. Um, so those are slightly different mechanisms through which it heats the body. 
Can you talk a little bit about the difference there? Like, um, are there like some other uh, clear differences and um, and so on compared to a traditional dry sauna and an infrared sauna? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think one of the main differences is really that you're, you're, you're going to stay longer in an infrared sauna. So with a traditional sauna, you know that very well, Timo. Um, you know, you possibly do 10 to 15 minutes. If you're really hardcore, you probably do 20 minutes based on the air temperature. And you do that, you know, two times, maybe three times eventually. Um, so therefore, you know, yes, you have really high temperatures and obviously it, it does help tremendously with heat shock proteins. Um, but overall, you're not sweating as much because you're not staying in the sauna for long with an infrared sauna because the air temperature is lower and the goal isn't really to make hot air or to have hot air temperatures, but to rather have these infrared heaters around me on all the time, really heating me up from the inside in a more gentle way. You also stay longer in the sauna. So we sort of recommend at least a minimum of 20 minutes. And you, I think you can stay in there for 45, 50 minutes. Some people, some hardcore people even do an hour. And with that, because you stay in there and the heat is run all the time and your core temperature keeps on going up, going up, going up, you actually have a stronger uh, hypothermic response with the body. What that means is obviously you induce an artificial fever. Now, fever is obviously, a, you know, it's a protection mechanism of the immune system. You raise your temperature, my blood, my blood cells are sort of, you know, triggered in the response in order to really make sure that the immune system is well supported. But it's heat stress. You know, and, and that's the fundamental difference, really. Your core temperature goes up more, which is why hypothermia, for instance, which also uses infrared and more medical devices, is an acknowledged cancer therapy in Germany, for instance. Like lots of people internationally come to Germany to use hypothermia as a, as a valid cancer treatment because raising your core temperature and really conditioning your body to this type of heat stress is tremendously, tremendously valuable. And I think you, if you use it every day, which I'm sure you have, you realize that the more you use it, the longer you can stay in there. So your heat tolerance actually goes up. And it's the same with exercising. The more we do it, the more our body gets used to it. And the, you know, and the, the less effective or, or the less intense, essentially, the body's response to this induced heat stress obviously is. Mm. And yeah, that's sort of the overall mechanism of an infrared sauna. And I think overall, we see like a, a higher increase when it comes to body temperature. And what, what obviously happens is blood flow is being increased. Or, you know, the cardiovascular system has to work harder. So our heartbeat actually goes up, our pulse goes up. So all of the things that we see in, an, in a sauna, but in an infrared sauna, because we're staying longer in there and the core temperature goes up more, we tend to see a stronger response when it comes to these benefits. Right. Another aspect is, yeah, I mentioned the activation of heat shock proteins. Um Originally, researchers figured out heat shock proteins by heating up cells, and and those had beneficial effects for building resilience, activating autophagy um, mechanisms through which the cell is maintaining its integrity. And uh, there is a lot of interesting side effects of that, including the activation of pathways related to longevity, like FOXO3, is one of those um, longevity kind of genetic pathways. And uh, one of the things that comes out from the research into sauna from Finland, specifically where a lot of some of the best sauna research actually originates from. So there's a few researchers who have done like several decades research into the health effects of hot rooms, so to say, um, is is also related to the immune system and the proliferation of white cells. Uh, so if you go to a sauna once a week, you already reduce massively your risk of getting just something like a seasonal flu. So you have more white cells and um, they are more ready to deal with intruders. Um, there's obviously a cardiovascular benefit to it. So one way to look at a sauna is that it's an exercise mimetic so it is mimicking the effects of um, exercise like moderate um, cardio training if you don't do any exercise but you would like go to sauna every single day 
you have some of the benefits that someone who would be exercising on a regular basis would have. And especially as you get older, that is important. Um, so some of the sharpest, uh, I would say the healthiest old gentlemen I know are, pe- are people who are regular sauna users. So they are sharp. They don't have like neurodegenerative diseases. I uh, haven't noticed like any reduction in their sharpness, even in their 80s. Um, and that's kind of one of those things that um, sauna is really good for in terms of longevity. And it this kind of training on your um, microveins and peripheral, peripheral um, um, cardiovascular system also helps to reduce um, blood clots and uh, a lot of that because you're kind of training the elasticity of your veins as well. So there's a lot of benefits of doing sauna on a regular basis. Um, Okay, so you mentioned that infrared sauna increases the core temperature. It kind of like far infrared goes just way deeper. It's, It's faster to heat the core than just trying to heat the air and then the skin and like induce... Um, the body to increase core temperature in that way. So that's one thing. Um, But I've noticed actually that with infrared sauna, there is less of a effect on the nervous system compared to uh, basically a dry sauna. Uh, For some reason, at least, um, maybe you know better, but infrared sauna for me is the sauna i use every morning so it's something i can start my day with it's not going to make me tired and exhausted quite the opposite it really helps me to wake up Uh, so that's why i like to do it in the morning it's not taxing my nervous system that strongly um if i if i would do a dry sauna that is something i would do like late afternoon or something like this after work and seems to improve sleep better in that that way when used as well um so what's your take on on some of these effects look i think uh i mean you're right that the infrared sauna is is more gentle on the body because you don't have these high temperatures and you can actually control of you know when you want to go out i mean you can do that with a traditional sauna too but because of the high heat it is quite intense and i think you know that's why quite a few people that can't actually tolerate this high heat they lean more towards an infrared sauna because it's a little bit more easy on the body. In terms of, you know, morning or evening, both works. You know, I think there's, I, or I often use it at nighttime because it helps me actually, you know, activate my, you know, my, my relaxing nervous system, so to speak, you know, to really get out of the fight and flight mode and just really meditate, read a book, do all of that. And after that, I take first a slightly warm shower to rinse off the sweat to make sure that the toxins, which I eventually expelled through the sweat, um, that these are sort of rinsed off before I switch into a cold shower. But I always do it in the morning too. I think, you know, the, the time of the day doesn't really so much of a difference, at least to me personally. But I agree with you that an infrared sauna can sort of really give you that invigorated feeling, like this glow, which is why, you know, there's actually a trend in the US, for instance, to have day spas, you know, in New York, which means like people actually before work or during lunch hours they sort of jump in and infrared sort of for 40 minutes because they say it gives me this glow. Mm-hmm. And so we have a lot sort of obviously through the sweat, you know, our skin health is sort of improving, you know, sort of damaged cells essentially are being, you know, repaired or sort of gotten rid of the body. So I think it really depends uh, in terms of the protocols of how you personally want to use it. There are other protocols with an infrared sauna, which are more extreme. I think, you know, if we look at detoxification, which is a major benefit of an infrared sauna in terms of how it works, these can be quite draining. And I would recommend to not do these before work. I think you guys in the Biohackers Handbook, for instance, also write about the niacin detox protocol, which is, you know, a very well tested protocol that has been around for multiple decades. Um, we can talk about it a bit later, but you know, for those that actually have taken flushing niacin and, and combined it with exercise in a sauna, this is intense and it really can wipe you out for the next hours to come. And that's why I would say if you want to use it for wellness, for well-being, to get your daily sweating in, I'm a fan of sweating once a day, do it in the morning. If you want to work on relaxing and you know, really de-stressing, working on sleep improvements, do it before nighttime. Uh, you know, that's a beautiful thing. It's so flexible to use that there's no real one way of actually using it. Right. 
So if we touch actually the niacin protocol a little bit, so niacin increases lipolysis and it, it basically, um, and, and also infrared sauna like synergistically, it really puts the fat tissue into movement in, in a way and that helps to secrete some of the toxins which are stored in fat tissue. And you can use like chelation agents then to bind them um, in the digestive system, for example. So one of the things that I use are green powders when I combine with my sauna. So just from a nutritional perspective, it's great, but it's also from this kind of detoxification and, and binding perspective. I use chlorella. Um, I, I use um, like different types of seaweeds uh, for that purpose. Another thing that I like to use niacin with is because it tends to open up the blood-brain barrier a little bit. Um, it is pretty good for driving in some of the medicinal um, neuroprotective uh, compounds, for example. So there's a lot of phytochemicals and herbal teas and all that that are very good for... Um, reducing inflammation and for the brain specifically many people have probably heard about um, lion's mane and combining lion's mane with niacin is one of those key um, like components for example in paul stamets protocol um, where he com he actually the some of the original papers that he wrote uh, it was not just combining niacin with lion's mane and maybe some other mushrooms but also some herbs uh, that he was throwing in there as suggestions that people could use so you can just like plain use niacin with some medicinal herbs it, and what i do i also use a humidifier so i i'm actually putting into my humidifier some of those um, essential oils that have been discovered to be very beneficial for specific things uh, through absorption through the lungs uh, rosemary uh, is good for the immune system, uh, uh, also peppermint, um, these kind of things. But it's it's also good for cognitive performance. Um, that's like one thing that has been discovered. Uh, there are um, some herbs that are really good for meditation and kind of increasing theta brain waves, like frankincense, which is often used in... Uh, in incense and all that for, for a good reason. Uh, so what I actually have done, because I like a little bit of humidity and infrared sauna can be a bit dry, I like to bring a humidifier inside. And while I have the humidifier to increase the, the air humidity, I also combine that with some essential oils. Is that something you are also doing yourself? And do you have like some specific favorites yourself? We're actually working on an uh, on an aromatherapy device, which do, would do exactly that. I mean, you know, the sauna can, as you said, can house a lot of different wellness amenities. You know, you can add various different wellness therapies into the saunas in a very modular system to really make it your five-in-one, six-in-one modular health stack or health system, so to speak. And I personally I use lavender a lot, you know, especially when it comes to nighttime sleep. Frankincense is one of the most potent oils, I think, together with oregano in terms of its concentration and its medical effects on that. Um, but I use primarily um, lavender and the sauna because I primarily use it at night, you know, and therefore for me, it's really about calming down, you know, making sure that I have a good sleep and that I get my solid seven or eight hours in that I actually feel nice and fresh in the next morning. But in terms of the therapies and, you know, making sure that you get at, you can add some humidity into the unit and combine it with essential oils, stay tuned because um, I think later this year we'll be able to launch this. It's sort of another add-on that you can actually bring in the sauna. Right. The respiratory system can be used for other things also. And I think you have also a salt therapy device. Is that right? Exactly. I think uh, it's always been the vision to say, like, you know, if someone only has one hour per day to really get, you know, as many different health therapies or health amenities are obviously in, um, then, you know, we want the sauna to be really this space where you can combine that. You know, I'm not saying like, not be able to you know probably produce vitamin d in here so we're sort of working on the two but the overall goal is really well to sweat in here to relax to meditate to have essential oils 
to have a sword therapy diffuser, which sort of really grinds down very small um, sword particles, mixes it with water vapor, and then sort of it creates this, um, a stream basically inside the sauna and it enters your respiratory system and your lung health, which is very fantastic for people with asthma, with high mucus, with overall people potentially recovering from long COVID symptoms, you know, with the lung health obviously took a bit of a hit. Um, and, you know, then we have red light therapy. So we're really trying to think about it as like a 360 health and wellness system. And at its core is obviously an infrared sauna, which in itself helps you with detoxification, with relaxation, with, you know, mimicking, um, mimicking exercise, as you sort of mentioned. In fact, it's been shown to help with weight loss too, which, you know, supports obviously what you've just been saying. But people always say, I've only been sat in here, I only lost water. What happens? And, you know, and I think this, this studies or these studies and the research indicates, no, 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 no. There's happening a lot more than just what you see on the surface because the magic really happens inside our body when we relax here, we sweat, and it's phenomenal to look at all these benefits. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that was a lot, a lot. And I have also noticed that in winter time, when the um, when you have a kind of uh, more dry indoor air, uh, combining with a humidifier going into an infrared sauna, um, it tends to kind of open up the airways also a little bit um, because of the exercise mimicking component as well. And with the humidity and all that, it kind of works as a humidifying chamber as well. And it's very good for the respiratory system, keeping your mucous membranes healthy. And uh, yeah, you mentioned also recovering from certain illnesses. It, it it's not just, you know, the thing that starts with C, but like so many other things like seasonal flus and so on. Like if you have any respiratory issues, infrared sauna is actually pretty good. And it's, I mentioned earlier, it's more gentle. It's generally not recommended to go to sauna if you're sick. Um, but in the case of infrared sauna, it, it, it really does like help recovery. I've noticed um, in my own experience and especially when combined with red light therapy and you have a new unit for red light therapy specifically. So there's a unit that you can install into the sauna. So I have that in front of the door and it is a very good unit. I have to say that comes, uh, it is available as an add-on to the sauna. I definitely do recommend for people to get one of those. Um, it's inside the sauna. It is designed in such a way that it is um, it's able to deal with the heat. And it's a very strong unit. And I use that every single day. And red light therapy has a lot, a lot of benefits for... Um, so if we think of like the wavelengths, like the far infrared light goes really deep into the tissues. Uh, near infrared light goes... Um, several centimeters into the tissue and the red light goes just a little bit like uh, into the soft tissues and all of those wavelengths have like slightly different therapeutic effects and when you combine them in such a full spectrum way you get like really great uh, benefits with red light you get the activation of cytochrome c oxidase in mitochondria so it produces energy so it's a really energizing thing in the morning so many, many people have heard about uh, seasonal blues and like having like some kind of daylight lamp to wake up. Um, this is kind of like meditating in front of um, sunlight in a sense, like you close your eyes and it's just like this really bright uh, red light coming through. And it, it really works as a kind of a tonic in a sense to wake you up, but also to increase the healing properties of light especially in skin tissue uh, and elsewhere like there's so many different benefits of it but uh for beauty that's really good if you have acne um sweating in general is good for keeping the skin healthy for sure for detoxification but combined with red light it's a very powerful combo and yeah so is there anything else you want to add about the red light unit that you guys have and it's no, I think, you know, I mean, I think about biohacking, which is, I think these days a very overly used word, so to speak. I think it's almost gotten trendy, like detox five or 10 years ago, I think. And I like to think of biohacking of just really making sure that our environment is in a, in a most healthy and ideally most natural way. 
And what I really liked about your metaphor, your comparison is like, you know, you have all these different wavelengths and an infrared zone that sounds super complex at the beginning and red light therapy, again, they're more different wavelengths. But the beautiful thing is that all of these wavelengths, actually, we, we have these in nature, like, you know, they are emitted by the sun. You know, if you go, if you sit in front of a bonfire, you know, you have fire and red, it's the same type of heat. If you sit in a sauna, if you, if you lie on the grass and you have the sun on your face or on your belly, it's the same wavelength you have sort of in a red light therapy unit, but also in an infrared sauna. And I think the great thing about technology nowadays, you can sort of really hand select and hand pick these different wavelengths and make them sort of into a unit. And, you know, whilst the infrared sauna is more heat focused, everything is to raise your core temperature, make you sweat, help you with detoxification. The red light therapy, although it's also infrared mixed with red light therapy, aims really, I think, more on a light therapy aspect, mitochondria health and whatnot. And therefore, they're fundamentally two different therapies. But the great thing is sort of really try to bring these together so that you obviously sit in the sauna, you heat, you sweat, you detox, you reduce inflammation. And the red light therapy brings a different range of wellness aspects or of health aspects into the unit. And I agree with you. You know, it's it's a wonderful therapy. It's a wonderful technology. And you can get a sauna now. You can get at the red light therapy two, three, four years later. Like, you know, it's all compatible to some way. And I think that really allows you to sort of stack your different health systems and you know work on a morning routine that really works for you whether you want to combine sauna red light therapy that's all up to you um mm -hmm. but i agree that the the idea of having an all-in-one solution including red light therapy is, is fantastic right glad to hear that you like the unit absolutely yeah and in your sauna you also have a holotherapy uh unit so that's basically for different spectrums of light so Different colors have like different mood enhancing or activating properties in a, in a gentle way. And that's what uh, you can do. You can kind of pick your favorite color. Uh, so what Johannes right now has is like more of an orange light above, but he can change that to blue or red. Uh, red is great in the evening. I really like that. And uh, so, so there's like different different like modalities as well for just winding down as well now if we look at like sauna use like many people often have an infrared sauna session after gym because gyms have an infrared sauna very often and they do a heavy workout or something like this and afterwards they go to an infrared sauna okay. to kind of recover that's one way to use it but what i've done is to reverse this so what i do i go to sauna first i get my core body temperature up I, I get um, my my cardiovascular system pumping and and getting you know all these things um, that we discussed into the system and afterwards I do uh, when I get out of the sauna I do like a moderate weight training workout often with kettlebells or I might use a resistance band of some sorts um, I might do some yoga as well because your muscles are a bit relaxed and um, it's it's kind of like it, it, the sauna works kind of as a pre-workout in a sense and then you get into into like uh, some activity so i i feel that i get more benefits of activating the the kind of expanding the veins a little bit like having this vasodilating effect and and then combining that with a little bit of exercise like is is this something you also do like do you have like other protocols around sauna when, when it comes to like physical fitness i think this is great i think what is quite important to notice timo is that there are two different focuses like if you if you exercise first especially like weightlifting or competitive exercising or competing and you do a sauna then the goal is really to reduce your recovery time and the way you do that is that you raise your core temperature and through this more oxygen, more blood, more nutrients are essentially transported or brought to the muscles that were used in order to exercise, right? So you basically, the body looks after the muscles in a better way, which should help. And, you know, science has shown that, which helps in sort of reducing the recovery time because the muscles have everything that they need in order to recover faster. If you do a sauna first, you also have these benefits, but obviously the muscles haven't been used yet to the same extent, which means you, know, you are preparing your muscles in order to compete, which you know is an interesting one because it's not necessarily straight away about recovery, but it might actually be about performance enhancements 
And the reason is your muscles are better equipped with oxygen, blood flow, and nutrients. But also, as you said, like your body's relaxed, everything, you know, loosens up a little bit. Probably your flexibility has gone up too, you know, like because of with heat, everything, the muscles, and the fiber has actually gotten loose. Therefore, depending on the type of exercise that you do, I would, I would suggest, and, you know, I need to look at the research again, that your performance probably goes up. We've seen similar experiments with red light therapy, where they sort of looked at before exercise and after. And quite often, if you did it before exercising, your strength and your performance increased. So your muscles essentially had more energy to perform better than actually not having red light therapy or the sauna beforehand. Right. There was one study that looked at grip strength. It sort of measured a 15% increase in strength over the course of three months when actually doing it prior to exercise as opposed to post-exercise. That's funny you mentioned the grip strength thing because that's one thing that I do inside the sauna. I have one of those grip devices that I use uh, while I'm inside there and I find that very helpful and useful to combine with the sauna session. Um, the, the kind of exercise benefits it depends like how heavy sauna session you have like if you really like exhaust yourself like of course your performance is not going to be as same as like if you just like cold turkey start like lifting heavy weights like for for some kind of deadlift but um just a moderate setup will definitely enhance um blood flow and, and get you prepared for that that like weightlifting session but one thing about what I really like about this, like some kind of um, uh, manual massage therapy when it's combined with infrared sauna. So I have one of these massage guns that I use on so soft tissues. And that's one of the most effective ways. Like if I have like any kind of um, back pain or there's like maybe some, some, um, some people have migraines because of like stiffness of, of the neck area. Uh, reduced blood flow into the brain because of that stiffness and maybe that's contributing to some brain fog. When you take an infrared sauna session and then you combine that with a massage gun that you can self-administer, it's amazing how it works. Like it really opens up. I just feel like I don't need to go to a massage therapist when I'm, you know, combining a massage gun with infrared sauna and, and doing that properly and then combining that little bit of exercise or yoga. And actually the yoga moves are also, they just go much deeper after the infrared sauna. So I like to do deep stretches afterwards and I have a yoga mat for a reason in front of my sauna, like uh, ready to go. So the kettlebells are there, my resistance bands are all, all are in front of the sauna all the time. So I can like, when I step out, I'm, I'm ready to go with those. Right. I use a, um, I use a dry brush. So I think it's obviously not as effective as a massage gun, but you know, you can do a lymphatic massage on your own to really mobilize some of the fluids, you know, like you can probably find like a, you know, a, a wooden device that just allows you to, you know, essentially have a soft lymphatic massage on your own, or you use a dry brush you know, I think that's a great thing about saunas in general. Like, you know, you can do lots of things at the same time and just really make sure that you maximize the effectiveness and the fun of actually, you know, using an infrared sauna. Um, that's, a, yeah. that's a great addition. Um, now, I think one of the things that is quite important that I just quickly wanted to raise here is like, you know, this is technology. And I think the beautiful thing about technology is it works. Quite often, you know, I think we live in a time now where technology enhancements and developments are faster than ever before. It's great because we can solve a lot of the problems, but also when we look at biohacking, you know, we are more and more in an artificial environment. And, you know, electromagnetic frequencies called EMF or ELF, extremely low frequencies or electrical frequencies, they go up and up and up, you know, and it's not our sort of natural state. And with infrared zones specifically, it's a real issue. Because you literally, and you can see all these heaters around me, if you have the video on and there are two more heaters in the front that you can't see, I'm surrounded by electrical currents. So I'm surrounded by electrical fields and electromagnetic fields. And I think that was actually one of the main inventions that we did a couple of years ago, so sort of really developing a heater technology and the design of this unit to have probably the lowest EMF levels in the world for an infrared sauna. And I think also be the only company that really works on reducing electrical fields. Because it is a real thing. And if you speak 
you know, if you do your research and if you speak with a lot of people, they don't have a clue, you know, you know, or competitor, co competitors too, like they don't really think about it. And I think that's really where I think we've really succeeded well, because it is a true groundbreaking setup when it comes to electromagnetic frequencies. And there are still some, whenever electricity runs or the, whenever there's an electric current, you always have this frequency, but it's a matter of mitigating that and really making sure that from the design perspective, the way the product is designed, the way the wires are run, the way, the, you know, the way elect the electrics are placed in the unit, I think that's that's really something I'm quite proud of. And I think that's why I would my pat will put my hand in the fire and say it's probably the best in the world. I haven't seen obviously all the sauna sets, so I'm always a bit more careful, but um it is truly important. And I just wanted to address that because I really feel like if someone looks at health, this is one of the main requirements, you know, because people don't want to sleep on Wi-Fi routers in the same metaphoric way that also applies to infrared saunas. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a great addition that it is very low EMF, so when you buy from Clearlight, you can be sure that uh, you're not sitting in some kind of radiation chamber in terms of EMF radiation, so so that's one really good addition and benefit of that. Now, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things that go into an infrared sauna that you can't do with a traditional dry heated sauna, for example. We, we address several of those modalities, like... Um, in a 30 minute to one hour session, you get so many different benefits and it's pretty easy to combine with a sound like this. I think there is one thing that comes with your, uh, like is a is an upgrade to your sauna that's possible, which is also related to some some like wavelengths or vibration. I think you have like a vibration therapy setup like that you can install under uh, the seating where you sit. So maybe you can also mention that one, like what is that doing? Sure. Uh, we call it the um, the VRT, the vibrational resonance therapy. So the idea is that you know if you if you have a sauna, you sort of you, know, you sit in there nicely, you relax and you sweat, um, you know, and you can listen to music as you obviously mentioned, Timo. And this new therapy type of thing, I always think about it as the fourth dimension of a sauna because we essentially try to bring in movement, which again helps to sort of mobilize you know the lymphatic system and fluids, but it also sort of if it's the right frequency and if it's really high quality sound, like you wouldn't listen to Lady Gaga, obviously, in there. Um, but, you know, it's sort of really therapeutic music. It can actually help your body to relax faster and to sort of mobilize some of the fluids in your body. And the way we do that is we link essentially the sound system to a vibrational system that is situated under the bench. And then I can listen to meditation and music or 528 uh, hertz frequency music, for instance, which you can find on Spotify for free. Um, you know, and I, I play the music, but it's, you know, it then comes through the speakers and the music is also mirrored through these amps, through these vibrational modules that essentially sit under the bench. And it's a bit of a weird feeling because obviously you sit there and it's slightly vibrating. It's not as strong as a vibrational plate or anything, but it really is quite nice when it is good music. Um, and I think that's really the true differentiation. We're working on a playlist to just really educate more on the benefits of sound healing, of, you know, vibrational healing too. Um, and that's an idea to really come into sort of a deeper state of relaxation, potentially meditation. Um, but it is a bit more, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more abstract than red light therapy, which is very simple science. This one obviously comes more with a relaxation feature. Right. Yeah, that's a great addition. So if Schumann resonance means anything to you, like this, what you can use that for, for example. So, yeah, I think we covered a lot of ground when it comes to infrared sauna and all that. We actually have a discount uh, as well. So if someone wants to get their hands on one of these fine clear light units, you can do it right now. Um, and you can use the code... Um, uh, Teemus Sauna, uh, uh, and so my name is Teemu, T-E-E-M-U, and then Sauna, Teemu Sauna, that's like Teemu Sauna. So use that code and uh, you will get uh, a nice discount from Clearlight, and you can apply this code uh, when you order your sauna from clearlight.eu, is that right? Yeah, it depends a little bit on the country you're in. Um, but I think for Europe, it's clearlightsaunas.eu for Europe. Um, if you're in the US, it's infraredsauna.com. Um, if you're in Germany, it's, a, again, a different one. So just maybe look in the territory that you are. But if you're in doubt, just you know contact us on clearlightsaunas.eu or 
you can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram too. You know, I'm only human too. So please feel free to reach out, you know, contact me, give me feedback. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Clearlightsaunas.eu. Check it out. And Teemu Sauna, that's, uh, that's a good way to get a, get get yourself started. And if you're still wondering, like if this unit is for you, come to Biker Summit. Uh, you can get the tickets at bikersummit.com. It's a good place to come over and meet the others and uh, uh, discover more about the different modalities of optimizing health and well-being. And sauna, including infrared sauna, are definitely part of that. So thank you very much, Johannes, for joining for this uh, conversation. And I wish you all a very healthy recovery day, hopefully also by using infrared sauna in your daily routines and practices. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure to be here.